because of all the strange places that cross stitch has taken me today's the first day that somehow i am trying on ball gowns hey my name's steph welcome to my weird world where i design cross stitch patterns and people stitch them in today's version of a studio vlog i am going to be trying on ball gowns talking about my trip to portland We'll talk about some weird event called the Jingle Ball, and I'll show you assorted needlework projects and goodies. Sound good? Okay, cool. First up, let's go dress shopping. I never thought I would need a ball gown as a cross-stitch designer, but I'm going with the flow. <laughs> Welcome to my project called the Jingle Ball. If this is the first time you've heard of it, in my previous video you can find all the wonderful details. Most importantly, you're invited. It's going to be an awesome party on December 2nd and 3rd. Me and 12 other amazing cross-stitch designers are planning a needlework ball with music and all sorts of fun. So make sure you go back. But my fairy godmother is out of town. I had to head up to South Bend to the Cassidy Costume Company to find me some really big sleeves. Here's my before. Embrace yourself. Craziness ahead. Here is gown number one. My face looks like that because I can't believe how utterly fantastic it is. I would have taken this one home, only I couldn't zip it up in the back. Slight problem. But look at these sleeves! I mean, I wanted big sleeves. I had no idea the world could deliver such magnificent sleeves. I even had to stop and take a glamour shot. It felt so glamorous. Wearing sleeves like this made me feel like nothing is impossible and all my dreams would come true. But then there was this lady, which just goes to show that no matter how fabulous you look, there will always be haters. Here's dress number two. Fabulous because it's made out of 75 pounds of green tulle. Not so fabulous because it has no sleeves. Dress number three, the dress of my dreams. It has giant sleeves. It has bows where I didn't even know I needed bows. It's amazing. It's fantastic. And I took it home. Hi, it's me. Uh, hey, what's up? Nothing much with me. I mean, <clears throat> just a normal day. <sighs> Apart from the fact that um, I haven't worn a gown uh, for such an extended period of time since I got married, which was 20 years ago. Also, the crinoline that I was wearing um, had some sort of shapewear in the top and I don't wear that kind of thing and I don't know how y'all do it I that's uncomfortable <laughs> uh, breathing I don't like how do you go without breathing I'm not sure um so yeah feeling a little sweaty uh, <laughs> I wanted to show you my magnificence, uh, obviously, or I would have changed. Um, let's talk about the Jingle Ball. Uh, since the cat is out of the bag, uh, I thought I would give you just a uh, Lindy Stitches chat <laughs> while I still have my gown. Uh, wow. Uh, welcome to my huge project, the biggest project I have ever attempted in the world of cross-stitch. <laughs> I don't even really know what to say about it. Uh, other, other than it is going to be fantastic. And I stay awake at nights thinking about how fantastic it's going to be. I 
am so excited and honored that my friends, <laughs> my fellow designers, uh, have joined this crazy project of mine. I don't think it's crazy. I think it's going to be great, but it is a little crazy when I like start like breaking it down. <laughs> uh, and I have so many, I mean, it's only, uh, it's today is like October 10th or something. And I have the ideas just do not stop arriving at my doorstep. I have post-it notes, like I'm not a huge stick post-it note everywhere person typically, but now I am. It's like, write that down, stick it up, stick, stick, stick. And yeah, I do need to take some time <laughs> to consolidate the post-it notes. Um, but it has been so great uh, so far to plan this event and to think about how this could be so fabulous, literally. Um, I was really encouraged by uh, the Acorns and Threads Zoom aspect of the retreat I did. People really seemed to have a good time and it, w it was encouraging to me. And I have, I have so many secrets and I can't spill very many beans, but, um, I'm just, I'm really excited. I'm really glad I don't have to wear that crinoline anymore. <laughs> so, uh, my family was very kind and helped me on Saturday try to get, uh, <laughs> some footage of me in this silly gown. Let it never be said that I won't do things for my friends. Um, I don't think I would have done this if it was just me. But I, I, I want to go above and beyond. And I, I hope that they are, are happy with the work I'm doing for them. <laughs> They're probably like, put some regular clothes on, please. Um, they helped me on Saturday to, uh, I had ideas for, uh, things I wanted to get, to get done in this dress. And they were very kind in helping me, but it took hours. And now, even when I look back at the video footage that we got, I'm like, why did that take hours? But it just did. It just took hours. And, um, yeah, this dress was like a two week rental. And I'm ready to take it back because I <laughs> I did ask them if I could buy it. Isn't that crazy? Um, but uh, no, um, I can't buy it. I had to take it back. <laughs> uh, but like I said, the ideas, even for videos, I'm like, oh, I could do that. I could do this. And it just had to be narrowed down. And I'm babbling. I hope you come to the Jingle Ball. I think it's going to be a lot of fun. And... Yeah. Um, the only aspect of it I, I don't like is that I had to pick, I had to pick a number and I had to pick 12 and then I had to issue invitations. And, um, I really love being friends, even if it's just business, it's, it's very strange in business, but I, I genuinely like to be friends with uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> everyone. And that is the only aspect that has bothered me is that I <sighs> eventually all the spots were filled and it makes me sad that not everyone, uh, everyone that I would consider a business friend, uh, got to be involved. But, uh, if this is just a big experiment and it's going to be a lot of fun um and who knows who knows how it will shake out in the end and hopefully there will be a next year and all sorts of stuff all the wishes and hopes and dreams and i'm gonna get out of this what this uh, sweaty dress okay um yeah so bye <laughs>
I want to talk about the Pacific Northwest Stitch Summit hosted by Acorns and Threads. I was a featured designer there along with my friend Janine McGowan of The Blue Flower. I just want to share with you uh, I, what I thought about my time there and the summary of it really is that I never wanted it to end and I want to live in Oregon. That's how it went. <laughs> I had a fantastic time. I mean, even getting, I got off the plane and I looked out the airport windows and I was like, whoa. What? <laughs> that I had gotten off like my husband and I didn't get to sit together I don't know why like we had we had like bought the tickets to sit together and then we didn't get to sit together and like I got off the plane way before he did I'm just like staring out the window and he came off the plane I'm like look <laughs> um and then even though we were super tired because we had gotten up obnoxiously early and been on airplanes all day, uh, we got our car and drove to Multnomah Falls. <laughs> From then on, it was just magic left and right. I mean, I can't describe how gorgeous it is out there and I also can't describe how wonderful it was to be with stitchers um doing the retreat was a lot of a lot of work I want I mean I want to say like oh it was a lot of work I knew it would be a lot of work and it wasn't work that I was unwilling to do um but it it's a lot of prep and then you put everything in boxes and you pray that these boxes will safely make it across the entire country. <laughs> and then it's like, here you go. Here's this special thing I made just for you. I hope that you like it. And they liked it. <laughs> and it was just, blessing after blessing and I'm just I was just really thankful for everything um to be involved and um to spend time with friends um some highlights of the trip were definitely visiting uh the twist homestead out in the forest and <laughs> Beth literally dug vegetables out of her garden to make a stew for dinner and I got to uh, <laughs> see all the wonders of, of, of her home and th let me tell you there were wonders I feel like if she came to my house she would be bored she would <laughs> I'm like here pet my cat isn't he wonderful <laughs> Uh, it, it was just fantastic, and um, even my husband said that day was magical, because it was. Um, we had such a lovely time, and <sighs> I just feel like I'm gushing. Um, another <laughs> highlight was that I got to meet Chris Gilbert and his wife Sherry for the first time. Uh, they decided to come out last minute. Sherry joined the retreat when there were some openings and that was unexpected until a few days before and uh, that was great. That was lovely and I love to get to spend time with them. <laughs> I forced Chris to do a little speech about what birds he had seen that day because he had been birding during the retreat and he was such a good sport that he did it and I know some bird crush club members went out to show them show him their bird crush stitches and he was very gracious about that and that was just lovely um so 
yeah, uh, visited Seattle after the retreat was over. Um, Jody Trixie Tricycle uh, <laughs> told us exactly where to drive and where to go, and it was so kind of her. I'm just gushing. I want to show you some goodies uh, from the retreat that I acquired. Oh, if you've never been to a stitching retreat, uh, one of the really beautiful things is how generous everyone is. Uh, I mean, this happened also when I went to StitchCon. People literally walk around handing out gifts and it's, I don't know, it's so heartwarming. Come home with a whole a bag of, of goodies. Uh, a lot of people were doing floss drops. Uh, uh, Tracy Stitches, for example, was handing out floss drops with her cute little puppy on it. Uh, I, and I'm not going to show all the wonderful little goodies that were given to me, but I had, I have to show you this. <laughs> So this was made by Debbie, and I will put her information across the screen right now. Um, her handle is Glitter Dove Fairy, and I know you've seen things, I've seen things like this before. I am so attracted to stuff like this. I could not, I couldn't believe that she just made it for me. <laughs> I, <laughs> so this is like a stitching journal. And it has pages for your whips. And, okay, this is what gets me. I feel like I, I'm very drawn to paper crafting. This appeals to me so much. You've seen stuff like this before. But there's all these little pockets with wonderful little ephemera. It just kills me. I, it's one of those crafts that... I find very intriguing, but I personally know I will never get into it, which is why I couldn't believe that she just did this wonderful thing for me. Um, she did say she sometimes has some for sale, but like every page, every page is a work of art and has little hidden surprises throughout. It just makes me in awe that People are so talented and creative and, I mean, I'm sure she like hand tea dyed these papers. Anyway, so, so beautiful. Um, I'm so, I was just so shocked. I also had an opportunity to go antiquing with Janine and it was so fun. Um, but I had to show you this. I had to show you this. This is one of my purchases. Um, this kills me uh, four times over. I It makes my soul hurt to look at it. <laughs> like, um, all the pages are dressed up cats. As a child, I had two or three books. And it was this little series, and I know I'm never going to come across it again. And I don't even know what happened to the books. I'm pretty sure my kids probably used them up to the point of not even being usable. Um, but if I ever find them, I'm definitely buying them. They were in color, but they were pictures like this of poor cats that got dressed up and their photographs taken. But they were like little stories, and I loved them so much. But I want to read you the beginning of the story because it's hilarious. Here's the picture. 
Once upon a time, there were four little kittens. Their names were Buzz, Fuzz, Suzz, and Agamemnon. And if that is not the beginning of a great story, I don't know what is. I will show you what I bought at Acorns. Here's my problem. I did not have enough time at Acorns and Threads itself. Let me just put that out there. Acorns and Threads is, is a shop that you need to put on your I must visit this LNS list, okay? It's a very lovely shop. It has a lot to look at. Many models, tons of charts, tons of silks. Uh, <laughs> And that's where I really wanted to head was the thread gatherer wall because I'm interested in thread gatherer silks. And uh, I actually have a spreadsheet that I access on my phone so that I don't buy multiples of the same colors because I tend to want to buy the same colors, but <laughs> very beautiful. I also got a couple of Belle Soise. Yes. Uh, so yeah, I mean, I kind of told myself, like, I checked out and I was like, that's it? That's how, that's all I spent? I was expecting it to be so much higher and, um, they were like, yeah, you want to go back? I'm like, yeah. Um, <laughs> and then I didn't, like, I did not have time. Kind of makes me sad, but that just means I need to go again. Also got this little, um, acorn pins kit, which is adorable. Um, I feel like you can't have enough little uh, accoutrements for your finishes, right? Very cute. And then I just got a keychain. Pathetic. It's pathetic. <laughs> I, I, wa I wanted to, I needed hours and I didn't have hours. So yeah. Um, next time. All in all, just uh, really thankful for the opportunity and uh, very interested in doing more retreats in the future as a designer. I would love to. I would love to. So I will put that out there and um, came home so inspired because it's so, it's just great to see what everyone is working on. And uh people showing me their finishes and their projects and you just come, you look at the brag table and you come home and you just feel so inspired. And so, yeah, thankful. And, uh, and, uh, nothing. That's just all I had to say. Hi. It's October 14th, and it is one hour away from launching the Jingle Ball. I feel very nauseous. <laughs> I have checked and rechecked everything 82 times. And at some point, you just have to hit the big red button and be brave. And so I'm going to do that. I'm going to do it. And it's going to be great. What could possibly go wrong? Everything. Everything I thought of last night when I should have been sleeping. <laughs> no. It's going to be great. Just as I was filming that clip, I was like, I need to try it one more time. So my husband is buying a ticket to the Jingle Ball right now. He's not even home, but uh, he's going. I got to go get his credit card. Okay, so he just bought a ticket and uh, now I am accessing the back end of the event platform that we're using and it worked. <laughs> it worked. I've already checked that it worked, but today it works, um, which leads me to believe 
it will be awesome for hundreds of other people. And then it will work, because it has to work. Uh, this event has been in the works since March. March? March. I'm terribly excited about the Jingle Ball, and I feel really privileged and thankful that 12 other amazing designers joined me. So there's 13 people involved, <laughs> 12 designer names or labels because uh, the Frosted Pumpkin, St Pumpkin Stitchery is two people. So these other 12 designers, like I, f I want, I want to please everyone. I want them to have an amazing time giving you an amazing time. I want you to come and have an amazing time. I just want it to be the most fantastic virtual stitching party that we're able to create. At the same time, nothing like this has been done in our industry. And so, we have no idea how many people are interested in coming to the Jingle Ball. And we are all small businesses. None of us have a warehouse and a team of 12 employees. And so it's, it's uh, the first time. So you just gotta go for it and you gotta prepare as best you can, and um, that's what we're doing. I think it's gonna be amazing. And should there be a next year, we will be even more prepared to make it even more amazinger. <sighs> so it... <sighs> I don't need any more coffee today. Uh, that would probably be a bad idea. So yeah, uh, I have uh, wasted a little bit of that hour and I might go buy another ticket. <laughs> Let me take a panoramogram. Hey everyone, here on a cloudy October day with Walter to give you some traditional floss tube material. <laughs> I want to show you the things I've been stitching on in the last month. I also want to do a little bit of a giveaway. I'll show you another uh, December Down Under ornament and we're going to talk a little bit about the Jingle Ball. So that's the agenda. First of all, let's do the giveaway. I've gotten away from doing giveaways on my channel. I Not purposely, I just forget to do it. So uh, today I'm going to be giving away an 805 Tara Finnegan made project bag in the print I named <laughs> Creepy Treaters. And this guy is my favorite. So vinyl front, uh, spiderweb charm, uh, leave me a comment using the word creepy and I will draw a random comment and give this away. I'm going to put goodies in it, of course. So if you are new to my channel, I am doing a December Down Under cross stitch pattern collection. Actually, at the very beginning of November is when I'm going to release it. The first Friday in November it will be available for purchase, but it is going to be a collection of five ornaments celebrating a Southern Hemisphere Christmas, specifically Australia and New Zealand. You are just doing that on purpose. All right. <clears throat> Distracted by cats. That should be cross stitch pattern. Very distracted by cats. So <laughs> last time I sh and I'm showing a little one every time I do a floss tube video. Um, you get the pre reveal. So last time I showed you the cassowary pattern, which looked like that. Today I am going to show you the kookaburra. Here he is, sitting on his Christmas crackers looking adorable. 
actually saw a kookaburra about a month ago and it was the cutest, cutest little bird. I'm gonna go ahead and read the notes that I put in my pattern about the kookaburra. They are tree kingfishers. So normally when you think of a kingfisher, you think of, uh, yes, the, they have big beaks and they catch fish with them. But these are tree kingfishers, uh, meaning they live in trees and forests in Australia and New Guinea. Well, that wasn't fair. I should have done one of my New, New Zealand ones this time. Sorry, friends. Another one for the Australians. But they're coming, I promise. <laughs> so the name of the kookaburra is the sound of its loud laughing call. Though they are kingfishers, they rarely eat fish. Instead, they prefer mice, snakes, and insects. And as far as the crackers go, I did not know what a Christmas cracker was until, I want to say, 10 years ago. I had never heard of them. I didn't. I had no concept of what this holiday tradition was. Uh, but for my fellow Americans who don't know what they are, these aren't candies. Uh, these are Christmas crackers. Well, I guess these red ones are candies. The bigger, bigger ones are Christmas crackers. And what they are is they are table decorations that get put on the table during your Christmas dinner. And they have long tubes with two ends, okay? And what you do is, I think, I hope I'm getting all this right. You give the other end to the person next to you and you pull it, or maybe you pull your own, I don't know. You pull it, it makes a popping sound, and then you unwrap it. And inside of the Christmas cracker is traditionally a paper crown, which is why he's wearing a crown, a terrible joke, and some candy, maybe some little toys, uh, but they're just something that you do during dinner, a uh, little festivity, and I just thought it would be fun considering that they have <laughs> jokes inside of them that you tell at the table to have the laughing kookaburra. So there you go. Coming soon. Next up, I would love to show you uh, a work in progress, cross-stitch wise, and a new start I have to show you both of which are not my designs. I am half-heartedly trying to finish Halloween square dance before Halloween. And I have all but two squares done. This pattern comes in three different little segments. Uh, so for example, this is square dance number three. I am putting them all together on one piece and they are adorable. I love working on this and I'm hoping to finish. I'm stitching it on the called for fabric, which is vintage country mocha, and stitching it in hand. And it's, it's almost done. Really fun. I'm using most of just the DMC equivalents for the floss, but I did uh, go ahead and use the over dyed cotton for the moon in the middle. Very adorable. So that's that. And right before I left for Portland, I decided that none of my projects were sufficient to take traveling. Does anyone else do that? <laughs> You're like, oh, I'm going on a special trip. I need just the right pattern for this trip. And oh, boo hoo, I, I don't have just the right work in progress yet. I better start something new. So that's what I did. Cooper by Kathy Barrick has been on my two stitch list for quite some time. Uh, yes. So I went ahead and how dare you take creative license with Kathy Barrick, am I right? Well, I wanted him to look a little bit more vibrant. And the reason is I saw some blue macaws three times this summer. It, it kind of was a recurring theme. 
Uh, a trip I took with my daughters. Uh, we saw blue macaws twice in the same trip. And then we also saw one when we went to the zoo on my birthday. And so this kind of, I don't know. It is the symbol of the fun I had this summer with specifically my older daughter. So I'm stitching it on 32 count old stationary linen by Seraphim Fabrics. And he looks like a bowling pin at this point. Uh, yeah, he doesn't have any wings <laughs> yet, but I really like how the colors are turning out. He is just a little bit more true to life. I don't know. If he were true to life, his whole stomach would be yellow, but I just wanted to amp him up to look a little bit more like an actual parrot. But my idea is to do him twice and flip him on this side so they're kind of looking at each other. I think that would look really cool, like here. Well, you can't tell. See the the branch? If you mirror image this, the branch would go down and then it would go back up and then the parrots would be facing each other. I think that would be very adorable. So far, he's been very fun to stitch, so I can imagine wanting to stitch him twice and I put him on the right spot so that if I have the perseverance, I can keep going. <laughs> but he's adorable. And that's what I've been working on. One of us was starting to lift the leg. And so I hope nothing inappropriate was going on behind me during all of that. Let's talk about the jingle ball. This last weekend was crazy awesome uh it has been so exciting to launch the event and uh to see your enthusiasm i want to thank all of you who have already purchased your ticket and all of you who have socially posted on facebook or instagram that you're coming and letting your friends know we appreciate it and we are so glad that you're excited i can't wait to put on an amazing virtual event it has been so fun to uh <laughs> brainstorm about how we can take a big old group of people virtually and really explore some awesome possibilities of how to hang out together and have a great time. Um, I'm trying to do live streams on Instagram to like answer questions and make sure no one's confused about how the event is going to work, but we're also behind the scenes adding things, adding good stuff. Um, the demand for classes took us by surprise, and I think that's very evident. Uh, our classes, all, most of our classes sold out very quickly. Um, and yeah, I do apologize for that, but at, on the same token, this is new for all of us, um, as far as, uh, putting on a show that's accessible to the public, um, with... 12 different audiences of cross-stitchers. I mean, obviously there's overlap. What am I saying? What I'm saying is that we are trying to um, meet the demand uh, for classes and um, we're working on doing a couple of things that will be accessible to everyone. And we're also adding some more classes. Anyway, if you want the latest Jingle Ball news, the easiest way is to be a ticket holder. I'm going to be emailing ticket holders heads up when things are available to see and hear about. Um, that's the number one way. You can also follow me on Instagram. That's where I'm doing most of my live streaming. But I am trying not to take anyone by surprise, meaning if something is going to be added that you need to sign up for or it's limited, um, I'm giving you a heads up. I'm also, <laughs> I've learned my lessons. I am also not launching anything that is um, limited while people are at work. I understand uh, that wasn't fair. Uh, just to explain from my end, we had no idea how many people would be down for this. But we're so excited that you are down for it. And yeah, we're... We're trying to beef everything up. 
you know, we want to make sure everyone comes and just has a nice time. And so that's what we're working on. And we have plenty of weeks to add more ideas. And even in the last week, I've had more ideas like, oh, we could do that. You know, it, the possibilities are so endless and it's so exciting. I'm so glad that so many of you are down for a little virtual party and um, get those mice sewing your gown. Contact your fairy godmother ASAP. She's very busy during the holidays. Um, yeah. <laughs> Beams of happiness, sunshine, and goodness to you. Uh, last week, uh, Friday, uh, we launched the Jingle Ball. I live streamed for two hours. Um, I was feeling very drug out. But my daughter and I had planned on going on a hike because it was the last chance day. <laughs> And by that, I mean, I'm going to make this a new tradition. We were talking, we were talking about how quickly fall just ends and you feel like you hardly get a warning, especially once the trees change. Um, in my area, once the trees change, you have like a week tops before it's all over, they're all gone, and you are plunged into darkness and seasonal affective disorder. <laughs> I'm laughing, but it's not funny. Um, <laughs> uh, because they change and you think to yourself, oh, this is the prime time. This, like you have all this time. You don't. So we were talking about that and I was kind of keeping an eye on what are the trees doing? What's the weather doing? Because not only do the leaves change, it also, the seasonal winds come in and the rain comes in. And so the leaves change and then all of a sudden it freezes, wind, rain, and all the leaves are gone. So long story short, it was last chance day, we decided. It's beautiful, it was like 60 degrees, the leaves had turned, and we were like, we gotta go. So we went to Potato Creek State Park, we went hiking in the woods, and it was glorious. And I hope that I can get out on last chance day every year. Make it a priority. So if you're in an area, I mean, take advantage, get outside, get some sunshine while you can, <laughs> uh, and enjoy the beautiful wonder that is autumn. Because um, if you don't enjoy it, the week later, you will wish that you had enjoyed it. So anyway, that is my, um, <laughs> that's my sermon for today. Get outside, uh, enjoy your last chance day, and um, give thanks. We have so much to be thankful for. Uh, I hope that, that you feel that you have so much to be thankful for. Uh, we've all had hard times. Uh, it's not always easy to be thankful, but it's good for the soul to count your blessings. So I hope that you and your family are doing well, and your cats and your dogs, and um, just a reminder, I have a newsletter. If you'd like to sign up for that, it is down below. I always forget to say the business lady things um, as well. So now we've done a giveaway. The code word is creepy. Uh, I have a newsletter. It's free. You can sign up for it down below. I also have an Instagram. I have a Facebook group where we do insiders kind of stuff every now and then. Um, yeah. Keep on keeping on. Hugs and snuggles to your cats. Bye.